Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1060, Trigonometry for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 31, we will conclude our uh, topic of vectors in this lecture series with section 9.4, and we're going to talk about the dot product. What is the dot product? Well, as we've talked about vectors previously in this chapter, uh, we've talked about addition of vectors. We can add them together. We can subtract them as well. Um, we really can't multiply vectors. We can multiply a vector by a scalar, but a scalar is not a vector quantity. Can we multiply two vector quantities together? Well, it turns out that in linear algebra, that is sort of a, a, a nuanced topic. Um, and there are actually lots of different types of products of vectors. In this concluding lecture for chapter 9, we're going to introduce the most commonly discussed product of vectors called the dot product. And they're not very clever names when it comes to these vector products here, because uh, we often denote or name them by their how we denote them, right? Uh, so you probably learned from previous algebra classes, you can do multiplication by like taking like, oh, I have two times four. Um, you can also do three dot eight. You can do two times six. There's lots of different ways of doing multiplication. And it turns out all these different vector products, uh, they use all these different notations as well. So one of them, we always use the dot notation and we call it the dot product to emphasize it. it it's sort of a silly mnemonic device, but uh, beware it's, it's present in vector algebra here. So the dot product, which will be denoted as u dot v, where u and v are vectors. Uh, so let's say that u equals a comma b, that's its algebraic form, and then v equals c comma d, it's its algebraic form. Then the dot product of u and v will equal a times c plus b times d. So notice what we did here. So a and c, this is the horizontal components of the two vectors. So you're gonna multiply together the horizontal components. That's where AC came from. And then what about BD? BD is the product of their vertical components, B times D, you get BD. So the dot product is the sum of the products of the horizontal with the product of the vertical. Now be aware that the dot product of two vectors is itself a scalar quantity. The dot product of two vectors is not a vector, it's a scalar, it's just a number. There won't be any direction to a dot product. So U dot V gives you AC, which is a number, plus BD was a number. Sum of two real numbers gives us a number. All right, so let's practice the calculation here. So if you have three, four, dot, two, five, what you're gonna do is you're gonna multiply together their horizontal components, three times two, and then you add to it the product of their verticals, four times five, so you get four times five, like so. Three and two gives you six, four and five gives you 20, and so the sum gives you 26, and that's the dot product of the two vectors, okay? Uh, another example, let's take negative one, two, dot, three, negative five. So multiply, get, multiply together the vertical, excuse me, the horizontal, that gives you a negative three, then multiply together the vertical, that gives you a negative 10, that adds up to be negative 13. And so algebraically, that's how we compute the dot product. It's a very simple calculation in that regard. Um, is there any geometric intuition to what's going on there? We'll visit that in a slightly different video. At the moment, I just want to get used to the calculation itself. What if you want to do a calculation like 6i plus 3j dot 2i minus 7j? Well, this is just, of course, unit vector representation here, uh, but the same principle applies. If you take the dot product, you put together the horizontal component, and so you're going to end up with 6 times 2. You'll multiply together the vertical components, which we see by the unit vector j. So you add to that 3 times negative 7. And so that's going to give you 6 times 2, which is 12. 3 times 7 is in 21, so it's a negative there. 12 minus 21 is equal to negative 9. That's the dot product here. But we have saw previously with this ij unit notation that things feel more algebraic with this notation. If I were, to, you know, if an intermediate algebra student were to walk in right now and they would look at 6i plus 3j and they dotted with 2i minus 7j, right? What they would see here is they might not know that i and j are vectors. They might think they're variables, right? And they would think, oh, I'm just going to FOIL this thing, right? That's what your intermediate algebra student would do. In which case, they'd get something like 6i dot 2i. They would get... 6i dot 7j, like so. Uh, they would end up with a 3j dot 2i, 
And then finally, oh, I don't know if I can squeeze it in there. We'll get a 3j dot a negative 7j like so. For which case, then if you you know do usual properties here, you get 6 times 2, uh, which is 12. And you're going to get this i dot i. They would call that i squared, mind you. But it's like, well, there's an i dot i. Uh, you're going to get this negative 42, right? i dot j like so. 6 times 7 there. Uh, you're going to end up with this 3 times 2, 6, j dot i, like so. And then finally, you get this negative 21, j dot j. That's what that intermediate algebra student would do, because they just follow the usual rules of algebra. Then they probably recognize that i dot j is the same thing as j dot i. They'd add those together. But uh, there's a simplification that's important to notice here. If i is equal to 1, 0, then what about i dot i? Well, that would equal 1 times 1 plus 0 plus times 0, um, for which I would just give you a 1. So i dot i is just a 1. So i squared in this case just gives you a 1, so you get 12. Um, similarly, if you think of j, of course, as 0, 1, then you get the same thing when you take j dot j, like so. You're going to get 0 dot 0 plus 1 dot 1, which is 1. So in the end, you end up with this negative 21. So i dot i and j dot j just disappear, right? What about i dot j? i dot j, like so. Well, you're going to get 1, 0, dot 0, 1. That equals 1 times 0 plus 0 times 1. That's just equal to 0. So i dot j just disappears. And this dot product is also commutative. So you see that j dot i is the same thing. So you end up with this 0 and 0. And so these middle terms just disappear, and you end up with the 12 minus 21 that we did before. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that the dot product does satisfy the usual FOIL rule from an algebraic setting. Now, don't, by all means, you don't need to FOIL these things out. It's much simpler to just know that the middle terms are going to cancel out. It's just the product of the horizontals and the product of the verticals. But even still, I'm trying to convince you that this vector algebra satisfies the usual, the usual rules of algebra that we're used to. Associative property, commutative property, distributive property, therefore the FOIL method all applies here. Uh, it's just... These aren't just variables. There's some geometric meaning to things like i and j. And we'll talk some more about this geometric interpretation of the dot product in our next video.